Oh, I didn't even see you guys there. What's going on you guys? TBR here back yet again with another King of Fighters All-Star video. In today's video we are going to be taking a look at EX Akuma and running him through his paces against Nightmare Geese in Guild Raid and showing you guys his solo performance in that mode. Now in today's video you are going to see more big numbers from this character, spoiler alert. I am going to walk you guys through the build, just give you my general overall thoughts on this character against Nightmare Geese. And of course, all of this is leading up to our upcoming spotlight on this character. For those of you who are wondering about M. Bison, yes, I will be working on the spotlight for that character this week as well. So yes, wish me luck in editing. But with all of that being said, I also want to remind you guys we do have a giveaway currently going on for a $25 Google Play or iOS gift card. Link will be in the description on all the details on how you can enter in for that giveaway. But with that being said, before we go ahead and get into today's video, make sure if you guys haven't already done so, you smash that like button and subscribe. And without further ado, cue that intro. Alright you guys, so in today's video we are going to be taking a look at EX Akuma in action against Nightmare Geese in Guild Raid. Now of course this goes alongside our showcase video last week where we did go ahead and run Akuma through his paces versus Omega Rugal. If you guys would like to check that out, link will be in the description. But in today's video we are going to be focusing on Nightmare Geese. Now of course I have been running him through his paces here quite a bit the past 24 hours. Reason being is we are getting footage together for the upcoming Spotlight video that you guys should see on Akuma later on this week, which of course, for those of you who are unaware, is typically going to be our formal review and thoughts of these characters. Now, before we get into that though, we are going to talk about Nightmare Geese here because this is arguably going to be the more difficult of the two Guild Raid modes. Now, obviously we have Omega Rugal and Nightmare Geese as our bosses, and Nightmare Geese does typically end up being a little bit more difficult. He's a little bit trickier. He ends up doing a lot of damage, so let's talk about how Akuma fares here. Now, of course, against Omega Rugal, we already know that this character is an absolute behemoth. But when it comes to Nightmare Geese, I am happy to report he is still an absolute monster. Now, the things you need to know about Nightmare Geese, obviously, we're going to be taking a look at a couple of clips in this video. I'm going to go ahead and go through kind of my thoughts here and then the build and then we'll get to the footage and you guys can enjoy that. But when it comes to Inferno, you guys will be seeing a solo clear against Nightmare Geese in Inferno. Now, typically speaking, you're going to want Chill or Shock. That or you're just going to want a character that's so over the top broken that it doesn't even matter in what are rules anymore. And that's pretty much what we're going to be using today. Now, one thing that I always like to remind people of, you do not need to be scoring the scores that you are going to be seeing my Akuma put up in this video. All you need to worry about is hitting this score right here to get this box. So while yes, it is really nice to see big numbers, big numbers are really not all that important at the end of the day. It really just comes down to whether or not a character can comfortably and easily score you that one key clear. Whether or not that is going to be the case is always going to be the most important thing. Now, of course, we're also going to be taking a look at Lunatic with Akuma today as well. Same rules apply here, so I just wanted to kind of get that out of the way. Now, with all that being said, let's go ahead and talk about Akuma. So I am using Ryu as my leader first and foremost. You guys saw in that previous showcase video that I did, I did not have Ryu yet, so I was using BS Ignas in order to get that 55% attack increase. Luckily though, now that I have Ryu, I now have an increase by 65%. So that is a very nice upgrade right there. Figured I'd go ahead and throw that in. Now, when it comes to Akuma, Akuma, as far as what is important to note here about this run, really when it comes to Akuma, he is going to be an attack type, so he is going to be a little bit squishy inherently. However, if you go ahead and use Nostalgia Chun-Li as your striker, the nice thing about her is she is going to have that heal on her striker ability by 12%. So that is going to be very, very clutch. You guys have seen me use this in Inferno against Omega Rugal as well. Very, very cool. This is something I would highly recommend, especially against Nightmare Geese, because you're probably going to end up needing those heals by the end of this fight. 
The biggest thing that you need to be careful of is the same thing you need to be careful of in general when it comes to Nightmare Geese in Guild Raid. You just need to be careful that you don't get caught in that ground aura, and you should be in pretty good shape. Overall, Akuma is going to be able to go in and pretty much bully this if you can do those things. Of course, the biggest thing about any of these squishy glass cannon style characters is you're always going to want to take into account how you're going to be able to keep them upright during a fight, which typically comes down to a combination of dodging and just being smart about what you're doing against Nightmare Geese. Now, when it comes to the build, let's talk about a couple things. Now, of course, this is the build that you guys saw me use in the showcase video I've already mentioned, and I am still using this. Nothing has changed there, nor has anything changed with my stones. Unfortunately, I am still unable to get burn stones for my circle and my square slots. Otherwise, I would recommend that you guys use nothing but purple R attack stones that have burn. That is going to be my number one recommendation to all of you guys. These are going to be the best overall stones for this. Now, I do have this guy here, and I do believe that this is a new change. I had had an HP selection box for a star stone that I used. Now, this is an HP stone here, unfortunately, because it did not give attack stones, or at least double attack stones. So, unfortunately, I do have HP there, but it is a definite upgrade from the silver stone that I had previously. And as you guys can see, it does increase my attack type fighter's attack by 12%. So we have that going for us. So I am currently using this setup, but again, if you guys can get or have a full set of purple gold R stones that are going to be double attack for burn, use those on your Akuma because he does have that 5.5 times explosion as you guys are probably well aware. So that is pretty much going to be that part as far as the build. Not much has changed there. Of course, I already showed you guys my EX core board in the previous video. Not much has changed there. Now, when it comes to approaching the Inferno battle, there's really not a whole lot that I would say is all that tricky here. All you gotta really do is just spam your awakening as much as humanly possible, and try to time your awakening spams when you can around the shield down, just like normal. Really, this character is doing so much damage with the shield up that it really doesn't matter when you use that awakening spam sometimes, so I just recommend trying to always figure out the best rotations possible to fit the most awakening rotations into a single round of these modes as humanly possible, and that is going to typically be the best starting point for learning how to do these solos, because typically speaking, the awakening spam is going to be where your bread is buttered. So that is something I just wanted to go ahead and point out there because honestly this character at high enough awakening levels and I've even seen this character at awakening level three and four be doing absolutely awesome numbers in these modes really it just comes down to being smart and quick on your thumbs because when it comes to dodging nightmare geese again he can be a little bit tricky so you want to be a little bit careful but really you could if you really wanted to use the Shermie option card as another option here this is something that you could definitely use if you wanted to. Now the reason for that is because this is going to have that shock damage on it, so if you really wanted to put this on your Akuma in order to help his performance with the shield shred, that is definitely something that you could do. I tried it out myself. For me personally, I found that I really didn't need it, and it really didn't add a whole lot to the fight, so I just went ahead and kept with what my normal setup was. But if you guys want to use the Shermie option card, it is always a perfect option for any of these characters if you are going to need shock damage. So that is something else that you could do. If I were to do that, I'd probably just take this guy right here off, more than likely, but it's up to you. Now, with that being said, when it comes to Lunatic, let's take a look at Lunatic. Lunatic is actually super duper easy. So I was actually kind of surprised by how easy this one was. The damage that you take from this version of Nightmare Geese is not as much, so that's definitely helpful. Although I would definitely recommend the Nostalgia Chun-Li still because honestly, by the end of the fight, it does come down to being a bit of a nail biter without her. So I would recommend that you guys have her. Really, you're not going to be able to get through these rounds without having at least some sort of HP issue by the end of it. Usually though, if you have Nostalgia Chun-Li, you'll be just fine. Now, as far as any changes 
against Lunatic, I didn't really make any. Uh, I didn't feel like there were any necessary. Again, you could use the Sure Me option card if you really wanted to. But as far as any changes in this mode, I really didn't decide that I needed to do so because honestly, you guys, I was already scoring so highly and I found it to be a lot more easy than it did in Inferno. So, you know, it's one of those things where, to be honest with you guys, I feel like you really don't need to change much going into Lunatic and you'll be able to one key it just fine. So really, that is pretty much what you guys are going to see in this video as far as what I did and what my build is and what my Yakuma is going to be trying to showcase for you guys today. Outside of that, any of these other modes, I didn't really feel like were all that important because there's a ton of different options here. And honestly, these things are pretty simple at the end of the day. Really, what I wanted to focus on in today's video was going to be Inferno and Lunatic because those are the most important as well as the most challenging. And those are going to be the ones that are going to give Akuma the most challenge at the end of the day. So with all that being said, you guys, I'm going to let you enjoy the footage. However, there is one last thing that I want to go ahead and show you guys. I need to show you my fame. So when it comes to my fame, as you guys can see, this is going to be my purple fame right here. Not much has changed there from the last time we did a showcase video. So pretty standard stuff. Now, I do have a bit of a surprise for you guys, though. Before I end today's video, I figured that what we would go ahead and do is because last night I actually finished this up, what we're gonna do in today's video is we're gonna go ahead and we are going to build up our Akuma even more, right? So we have a prime memory. We can go in here and I am excited for this. I have been grinding the heck out of this thing. So what we're gonna do is we are going to use this and further awaken our Akuma. So this is exciting stuff. I'm very interested to see just how much of a difference this is going to make in performance for this guy. Look at that CP boost there. Very, very nice. I don't know that I can fully get him to level 60. I don't think I can. It's a lot of XP capsules. Yeah, level 59 is a lot of XP capsules to uh, get from level 50 to level 60, guys. So that is a lot, but that's all right. Boom. Look at that, you guys. 10k CP he went up doing this. Awesome. Fantastic. Now you get to see what the uh, what the performance difference is now that he's at level 59. But anyway, you guys, I just wanted to go ahead and do that on camera for you guys since I know that that would be uh, something that you guys would probably enjoy. But anyway, you guys, I'm going to let you enjoy the footage against Nightmare Geese again. Very, very impressive numbers. This character continues to be impressive. I do think that this character is very future-proof. This is a character whose damage is so much higher than so much of the meta that honestly, there's a couple of characters in this collaboration in general I would say that about. But Akuma, I feel like, is very, very future-proof right now. This is a character that may end up like an SS Kyo, where he is extremely relevant for several months at a time, versus a lot of these other characters that are only relevant for weeks at a time. But time will tell. Right now, I'm just enjoying him. So anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoy the footage. I hope you found it informative. If you did, smash that like button and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one. You all take care. Peace.
Continue. 